Now, I've had readings, um, talks and chats with many wise people all around the world. Um, American Indians, um, Australian uh, Aboriginal people, people in, in South America. And they've all got one particular theme and that is something's coming. Uh, West Side Story. Something's coming, something's good. <laughs> something's coming. And what they're saying is, and it varies, but one, what I see, quite strong thing is, one third of us will move into another experience, another dimension, another planet, another di and two thirds will not. And the two thirds will not, it's not a judgment, it's not against them, but they haven't yet got the possibility, they haven't woken up to something, so they need things to be more difficult so they can see it more clearly. That's one theory that's going on. That there is something coming, but not only coming, most of these people say, it's happening. We're in the process of it now. Things are shifting. And also, the prophecy was, by many of these wise people was, that, yes, that things are going to get worse because what we suppressed is going to manifest itself on the outside, physically. And if you look at the news, I don't think it's just because our news is more efficient now. More people are doing totally irrational things. People stabbing their ex 30 times. And of course, a lot of that must be to do with drugs as well, including, according to a lot of theories, the antidepressants are causing people to lose it. So on one level, things are getting worse. On another level, can't you feel it? Something is happening. Another theory. I've spoken all about this before, but this is quite a strong theory. You see, my theory is, when we're negative, existence says, oh, you want to be negative. Good, we'll give you lots of things to be negative about. We'll give you all sorts of things. You want to complain? Oh, there's so many things you can complain about. And I'll put them in your life, all over the place, everywhere you go. And you'll meet complaining people and you'll have complaining groups. And if you start to see your complaint, and say, I'm not going to support that. You'll find complaint is a contraction. And as you see it, it stops. And then you start to look and say, about what do I have in my life to be appreciating? And suddenly, an expansion. And you start to say, oh, this and that and yes and this. And existence says, great! You want to start being grateful, I should going to give you lots of things to be grateful about. All sorts of things are going to come. Sometimes you'll just think about it and they'll come. Oh, I want to get in touch with so and so. Ring, ring, there they are. Or it's not magic. It is what is. It does seem to be. That's the way things work. We really do create our own reality. It's a terrifying thought, isn't it? Every one of those single thoughts start to create something. If you really get that, you start to devote your life to presence and catching what's going on. And you no longer support anything that isn't beautiful, loving, caring. And your life will change. I've seen it over and over and over. Listen, in the groups, this happened many times, somebody would have a breakthrough in the group and suddenly all their resentment about their mother dissipated and they started to feel grateful. They'd get back home, the phone would ring, the mother was there and saying, I've just realised that. What came was the cliché, it takes two to tango. If you hate somebody, it takes somebody to bring the hate back. Go on loving somebody. It 
melts on both sides. We really are responsible. I get that and I am grateful and I am mm, overwhelmed by the beauty of this world. And the, uh, I'm a people. Mm. My mother went out at 101 years old and she was there. She was love. She had nothing against anybody. Whenever she watched the television, it doesn't matter whether it was the so-called victim or the aggressor, she felt the same for both of them. In fact, a little bit more for the aggressive person. With them, for them. So we have the human realm, and you've, in a sense, got it. Because then you can look at people and, of course, help them. Mm. And you're still here to look beyond that into the unformed. What does human experience that is in a sense limited have to do with the unformed and how can we start to language? This tree starts to dissolve, that's really happening and the human mind is transforming itself into the dissolving. Okay, you said uh, several things. One thing is several psychics have told me that something is coming that will be totally new mm -hmm. and they can't see what it is. When psychics read, they read to a certain level and then they say, there's something beyond that, it's not death, it's something else and I don't know what it is. And my translation of that, it, it is beyond our human experience, it's something that hasn't been in this dimension before. I don't know what it is. And then you said something about sharing. And I really feel my sharing on this level is over. This is really hard work mm. on one level. Well, you don't have to do it on this. That's why I want to bring... No. And people have said mm -hmm. it'll be in silence. And I won't be traveling, which I'm very happy about, but people will come here. Now, I don't know anything about it. Of course, people are here. Uh, but you see, I don't know what that means. I don't know what this new thing is, except love, which is new. But that's the theme at the moment, is just love. But not the love as we know it, not love that has an opposite and has a you and a me. Again, as we get from the East, when the seer and seen are one, it's a love that is, it just is. And then you said, can I define? All I've come to is the something else that's... But if we're just playing with the something else, and we could imagine what it could be, not to push it, but to... I think it's about somehow a way of thinking and being that cognizes reality totally different than what we know. You see, now this is Alan. <laughs> Alan's really good at what he does to a certain level, but then he's trying to define it, and he can't be defined. Mm. Often in his interviews, he brings things out of people they didn't even know was there. He's really good at that. And his mind all the time is trying to define, mm. and it might be that our defining is stopping us going there. Just mm. that automatic thing that says, I want to know what it is, so that... Now, Alan, how come we want to know what it is? Mm. And it's because the moment is not fulfilling. Ah. You see, when the moment is fulfilling, there isn't anything else. And there can be a floating curiosity that if there is something else, I'm available. But in a way, listen, wanting something else is a complaint. Mm. And a complaint is going to bring you that frequency. Saying, ah, oh, I mean, just look at this moment. Just look at, wherever you are, this moment, wherever you are, whatever's going on. And when you're with that and fulfilled in that, I think whatever is appropriate will unfold. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. But I don't know. And I don't need to know. No, no, you don't need to know. And I don't want to push you into knowing because 
Yes, you do. Uh, no, I, <laughs> wanna, I don't want to push you, but I want to know. That's it. That's it. And so... Let's say you want to draw it out. Mm, I want to discover it for myself, okay? Ah. ah. But because I know there is something else, and of course I need to be here more, and you're right. A lot more. Yeah. A lot more. And you're right. There's something. I'm, I'm not, if I was really here, that would fill everything. Here's something else. You see, Alan is unique. He's an amazing being. And he has all this experience and knowledge of all these wonderful people he's been with. He's, he's unique. Hmm. And uh, I... Very gently, because I don't do this very much, I talk to him a little bit about his behavior. But only gently, because I don't know. Maybe he needs to be where he is so that he can talk to certain people, because I can't talk to them anymore. I can't, I just can't understand people's behavior. Why people keep doing things that keeps bringing them misery. I don't get it. I'm not in touch with that level anymore. Mm. But Alan is, you see, and I think, all of it, and I mean you. You are an authority on something for somebody. I mean, just the fact that you're watching this means you've moved. Mm. You have something to share with people. And I think that's what it's about. We need to share. And you can't share with anybody whose frequency is a lot less than yours. And you can't recognize anybody whose frequency is a lot finer than yours. But we all have something to share with each other. So I say things gently because I don't know whether people are supposed to be there or not. My feeling is Alan is a great gateway, a great go mm. doorway. And his questioning and the way he talks and so on opens things up for not only the listener but the person that's talking as well. So if we're going to be here, now let's be here. There's nowhere else to be. There's something that comes through you when you speak that is beyond you. We've been talking about that this week. And uh, it's not about Paul, but it, it's, it's beyond. Are you, are you in touch with anything like that? Well, when the identity to the self is released, and no longer trying to be right and avoiding wrong and getting what you want and avoiding what you don't want. When you're ready to just be without any of that, there's a, a buzzing in the body, a tingling, a frequency. It tingles. And when it tingles and you recognize it, and you're just here, and you're not trying to do anything. This tingle fills the body out to the skin. And when it does, you realize the same tingle is outside of the skin as well. Everything is tingling. Everything. And at that level, we're all the same tingle. At that level, there are no levels. There's just the tingling. Is there anything you would have done different? Any regrets? Any disappointment? Anything that, um, looking back, you, you think, oh, or doesn't matter? At the time, I think there were times I said, oh, it would have been better if I had. But from here, Looking back, everything was perfect, perfect. And if I hadn't have done that, that wouldn't have been you know, perfect. And so what that brought me to, the peace that passeth all understanding is that it's always perfect. It can't not be perfect. And neither can you. Perfect. That's the way it is. And if we're trying to be something else, we're missing who we are and what is and what we need to be and what we need to experience. Just being with 
what is, and that includes you. And when I say it includes you, here's a little technical thing. You see, when I say including accepting who you are, you think you've got to accept who you are, and then you try and do it. And what I'm saying is, if you accept who you are, you'll feel better. But if you try to accept who you are, you'll feel worse. If you're trying to accept who you are and you can't do it, come back one and accept that you can't do it. Keep saying yes to what is. Just, just, just the way it is. One more thing. There was a moment and in the groups you would say, you know, you searched your whole life, you went to gurus, you went to, you know, psychology, you did all that, and there was a moment when you stopped looking and something clicked. Uh, do you remember that moment where, you, where you, something clicked for you beyond the searching and you just... No, I don't have a memory. I can't connect with it. What I do vaguely feel, there's been many of those, there's been, ah. Oh, that's right. And then there's been another level of realization, another level of awakening. Ah, and then after that happened a few times, it was, oh, maybe this isn't it. It is it for now, and to be open for something else. And so often I see people struggling with the same thing over and over and over with a relationship that's not working, with a job that doesn't bring fulfillment, living in a place they're not happy with. And I'm not saying move. I'm saying be more present with what is. And then you'll see, something goes click inside and says, hey, time to move. And it isn't that you stop doing something. You stop holding what you're doing. You stop being identified. You stop being... Uh, doing. You just stop doing and movement happens on its own. And often it's disruptive because often when you reach, Gurdjieff used to talk about that, you do incremental changes and you get to a certain point and you're stuck there and it takes a little and you pop into another level. And that happened to you a few... Over and over and over and over. But when you first started on your journey, you, you said you lived in a very repressive, you know, English upbringing and you just wanted to experience the world. So I think you said you even danced in, in uh, a strip club or something. Too, cause you, <laughs> I went you, on stage once, yeah. Yeah, because you felt <laughs> that you, you wanted... Gosh, what a memory you have. That's right. That was in... Uh, in Copenhagen. Copen yeah, because right. you wanted to get over the repressed... And, be, and being embarrassed about having a, an erection ah. in public. Yeah. And you did. I you, did. Yeah. And something clicked like that. It's like, yeah, now sex is just what, what is silly, it? really. Is it, well, oh, nice, it's, 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 it's ah, ah, There you go, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, for me, it's still, still fun. Yeah, fun. If you see it as fun, but not meaningful, not tantra. <laughs> not the Tantra doesn't have something, but not the Tantra we do. You see, we'll diverse. Way back in China, northern China, they practice Tantra, but it's not Tantra like we practice. As far as I read, it goes like this. First of all, you went to a Tantric master. Many, there are many different Tantric masters, and only one of them are really to do with sex. He went to the tantric master and said, I want to study with you. And he decided if you were ready. Very rarely were you ready. He'd send you away for two years. Then you'd come and he'd say, good. Then you'd do meditations and this and that and the other. And then he would pick you a partner. And you'd sit in front of the partner for ages and ages and ages. Until you started to recognize the partner as divine. And then you would start to see, let's say, God in your partner. And then you were allowed to touch. You were touching the divine. You were touching God. And then caress. And then have intercourse with God. Which, of course, you always are, because you're God. 
but you don't realize it. So, oh, there's more to everything, everything. And the only way you'll find out is to be here. Make this your priority and listen to that voice that says, time to move on. If you're in a relationship where you're arguing and fighting, don't move on. Because if you're arguing and fighting, your partner is showing you what you have not yet resolved in yourself. So wait and be more aware and be more present and then one day either something beautiful will happen with you both or you'll see I don't need to be here anymore. But this comes back to the same thing you see. In each moment we're all getting exactly what we need. Any of those things were present and it doesn't matter if it's sex or... Disgust. You see, we go through things. Yeah. Um, at one time we were totally oblivious to ourselves except for a few philosophers. And then we started to... The big, the big breakthrough was in California. In... Uh, Esalen. In Esalen and, and the movement that was there. Suddenly we were having experiential groups we were having encounter groups. We were having things that we never talk about, we suppress, brought out. And encounter groups were a great thing. And for most people, we did that for you. You don't have to do it anymore. We did it. We had the experience. We contributed it to the collective consciousness. We don't need to do it anymore. And keep looking. Most things we don't need to do anymore, we've had it done for us. Right. You don't need to do the drugs and all that. And when we talked about Lao Tzu a little bit, you said and agreed that there was this other thing coming as if there's a, a wave through consciousness that's it's beyond the personal and there's, it's a movement. And, and, and that goes back to the indescribable again. Something's coming, something's good. Oh, uh, maybe tonight something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is going to be great. The air is humming and something great is coming. Come on, deliver to me. <laughs> Paul Lowe, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> still has... His voice here. <laughs> Wait, it went off key there. Oh, no, it's okay. I didn't notice <laughs> it. But you have a beautiful place. And, and I think you're still working. Not that you want to. You're still... Something's going on. Yeah. But the old is dropping away. Like it used to be I'd wake up with something mm -hmm. to share. And if I didn't share it, it would haunt me all day. Now I wake up with some things, look at it, and it fades away, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And then every now and again, and Alan Steinfeld comes and won't leave me alone until I do an interview. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, it did come 35,000 miles or whatever it is. <laughs> Not to do the interview, but just to, to be in this beautiful part of the world. So, mm, thank you, Paul. Mm. But you do have a lot more. Not to say, but to... I get this huge stream um, coming through you. Thank you. Hmm. It's something. So let's see, maybe something else will come up. But ah. that, I think that's covered quite a few things, hasn't it? Mm. And it's nice you have such a good outlet that so mm. many of us can share together. Mm. YouTube, I have 10 million views on YouTube. 10 million? Well, 900 videos and 10 Gosh, million. Gosh, you're a celebrity. Yeah, I'm a YouTube celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> so huh. Somebody said, Great. I'm so happy. Well, it's good because it's all good stuff. Yeah. It's all good stuff. I say it's news that stays news. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and mention that one about the two. Girls. girls, the two women. Yeah, I, I did this great interview with these women who knew nothing. It's called uh, Kundalini Awakening with Ali and Val, and nothing about anything. Party girls. Spiritual. And then suddenly they say, 
this awareness happened to them. They did no meditation. They did mm. nothing like that. They and, didn't even know about that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and boom. So what does that <laughs> tell you about the state of possible consciousness? Uh, I think many of us have come here in different levels. And some have come to share at a, a certain level. Some have come to be there to wake those people up to start sharing. And then other people have come to wake those up, those. So I think there are these different levels. There's a team. It feels like there's a team come here. And we're all, even although we don't know each other, we're all working in unison mm -hmm. in a way to uh, be here with this accelerated frequency that's happening here. Yeah, I think the acceleration is what's popping these people open because yeah. What they have, I think, is another level of their brain or mind or consciousness. That it, and it's like boiling water. First a bubble here and then it's suddenly... Yeah. And we've had people in the group say, mm. uh, I don't know how I came here, I don't know what I came for. And you've told me, you've just described exactly what's happened to me. And I thought something had gone wrong. Mm. But actually, now I see that I've awakened to another level and I was seeking medical help. Mm, yeah. So, and, and these, two, these, women. these two women, oh, just because they come from such an ordinary place, and they're still bubbly and fun, mm. he's showing people, you don't, please don't be serious when you wake up. No, don't do that. <laughs> but it, show, <laughs> it does show that it could be a society that mm, lives on that level. These girls could do it, and then other people. It, I think it's a positive sign that... Well, people have dreams, and I've had certain senses of this as well, people have told me. They remember living in a, in a community that is totally different from here, where everybody was in harmony. And if somebody got into trouble in some way with themselves, some difficulty, everyone that was there for them, it was all love and caring and no judgment and no againstness and certainly no punishment. And they remember living in that state. And I think it's possible many of us did live in that state. And we remember it somewhere. And so we're told it's going to happen here too. Well, it's happening. These women, you know, mm. what you're talking, Eckhart, you know, mm. We're seeing pockets of something else. And everybody has a different level of it to share or a different mm. uh, facet of it to share. Mm. And you still have a lot of energy moving through that body of yours to, to share. I mean, it's like you're being infused, I guess, just in this conversation with, um, with something. Not that you have to share, but you... There's something coming through, it's almost like right through your crown and out, to share. Just to, to, mm. That's what I get. So that, it doesn't feel natural anymore. Oh, it doesn't? No, it you feels can... as though something is slightly being done. Okay, we don't have to And do uh, it feels as though it's fading out. Okay. And then, again, this thing, well, my whole life has been about experiencing, sharing the experience, experiencing, share the experience. And now, experiencing and not sharing the experience, well, not in the old way anyway. Well, that's a new experience, not sharing. Yeah. yeah. And or not sharing in any way that is recognizable in the old way. Maybe when you stop sharing this polo thing, and really dissolve. I just had a flash, you see, these trees are sharing. Mm. They're sharing. When Sabine and I walk in the forest, we become so spaced out, we can hardly stand up. Everything, all the joints go like rubber. Mm. Uh, and at first we thought, oh, it's maybe we ate something or something. But no, every time we do it now, and it's everything is sharing. They're all sharing in their way. And when we, we are in the moment, we are one with that energy. And we're probably 
sharing with them. With them too, yeah. And maybe that's the next level of this. Mm. Like you said, and I agree, there probably are people in the Himalayas that have been there for hundreds. Just sitting, just being, just and, being. And, and helping to keep this place yeah. stable. A certain, yeah. And maybe some of the ETs are doing that mm -hmm. as well. Because I always thought it was so strange, considering the vastness of the cosmos and galaxy, that humans live within these 80 degrees of weather, you know, from mm -hmm. zero to 100 mm -hmm. degrees. Considering the, how cold and how hot it can get, there's mm, something mm. maintaining our environment, mm, mm, something mm. of consciousness. Mm. So, we're getting some help from somewhere. Mm. So, we're, we're all unique, totally. Each and every person is unique in every way. <clears throat> and we've got collective things that are similar. And what I suggest is take a look at spending some time, whenever you can, just being. So it might be in your apartment, but in my opinion, in my experience anyway, being in nature, something flows through us. And there are oceanside people, and there are mountain people, and there are forest people, and jungle people. If you're drawn in some way, just go and experiment with being there. If you keep thinking, oh, you know, I've always wanted to go to, go there, try it out. See if it connects for you. Because when you find your spot, and I think there are spots, people talk about um, Colorado, uh, Sedona, Sedona. The, the, they say energy vortexes, and the Aboriginal people, they've been here and saying, this is a special place to us, that's a healing place down there. The women used to give birth down there, and they go to different places, and they are really in touch. The, the elders, the wise people, they're really in touch. And... Uh, Beautiful people, beautiful. They're in touch. Thanks, Paul, for spending a little time. Mm. And any, thanks, thanks for watching. Any time you want to share anything that comes to you, because um, I'm happy that you're, you're sharing whatever you're sharing because people need to hear it. I need to mm. hear it. Well, we got it recorded. We got a website with mm. thousands of. Oh, yeah. Paulo.org. P A U L L O W E.org. Um, yeah, thousands of nice. Thousands. Of, there's lots of videos, audios, transcripts, mm. um, writing stuff. Mm. Yeah, lots of stuff. Mm. And do you feel something is changing? That's, that's your, your you see, just this shaking now, the body's shaking. Just that energy that's been coming through. Mm. It's an uplifting energy. The shaking is a lot. Uh, physically, it feels drained. Oh. But inside, yeah, uplifted, yeah. Okay, then I'm, we'll just stay with that then. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Alan mm. Steinfeld with Polo for New Realities here in Australia at a beautiful place outside of Byron Bay. You could do a pan out yeah. there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.